Um, today I wanted to talk about how uh, in business today, if you don't have data and you don't have statistics, you're pretty much worthless, uh, which is, I think is a real shame in the whole grand scheme of business. Um, you'll see there that uh, most organizations feel that if they just analyze data and have a load of pie charts and have a load of lists and a load of graphs, they can pretty much do anything. And I think that's one of the, uh, the tragedies in, in modern business. Today I want to talk about how most data and most statistics are actually used by people to manipulate the way that things they want to do. When you have data and you have statistics, you need to use your intelligence and use a bit of judgment and, uh, and come up with the right answer. Now, there are a lot of uh, companies out there and a lot of people out there who have used data and intelligence incorrectly, uh, Enron being a great example. Uh, Enron had a lot of data and they just decided to make it so that they were the fifth biggest company in the world and it turns out they were talking rubbish. Um, there's another great example in politics, which of course is George Bush. So George Bush had a lot of data, which just didn't happen to be very reliable data. <laughs> so uh, George Bush brings up a, a great, uh, great point, really, because the one thing George Bush never did was collaborate with his international partners. Collaboration was an invisible word to the George Bush regime, and it was a bit of a disaster. I did think long and hard about putting a picture of my daughter up straight after George Bush, but I decided to because Parenthood is probably the biggest collaboration that there exists in the world right now. I'm sure there's a lot of parents here who agree with me. And you ask yourself, why the hell do we go through three nights of sleep a, three nights of sleep a day? And the reason is purely because of compassion. But when that little, uh, little girl or little boy comes out, you have an immediate compassion with that person, and you don't always get it right. But 90% of the time, you do get it right. Uh, you get your little boy cleaning your car like this guy. So, <laughs> could be a girl. So, this is a great, great example of where compassion and collaboration are basically the same thing. And I think there's a great lesson in there for business. Next slide. And the reason it's a great lesson is because business is a human business and compassion is a human business. Um, we all are in the same boat together. We should all be striving for the same things together. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. And really, collaboration is the way forward. Because it doesn't matter what industry you're in or whatever you're doing, two, two minds are always better than one. And not just twice as good, normally five or ten times as good. Because you share ideas, you get thinking together, and you create things that are exponentially better. So what do we have in the, in the modern world? Well, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, a lot of uh, tweets about tonight already. And you ask yourself the question, why do people bother sending tweets in about whatever they're interested in? And the reason is because we actually do care about each other. Self-interest isn't uh, inherent in everybody. Everybody does have some compassion. We don't go and tell everybody everything in our lives. There's no need for that. But we do make sure that if there's a, a blog that's interesting, we'll pass it on. If there's any topic that you're interested in, Twitter is a great way. And Twitter really is the new coffee machine. It's the new water cooler. So when you're, you go into work, you can use Twitter to actually now have a water cooler or a coffee machine that houses millions and millions of people. And it's a great breakthrough for society. And it should be a great breakthrough for business as well. So, next slide again. <laughs> Charles Darwin once said that those who collaborate always prevail. And that is uh, completely true. Um, you can see everybody here today having a good time and enjoying itself. And all that is through the web through and through collaboration techniques that we've all developed over time. So, the message I want to get across is collaboration is great, but collaboration needs to be enhanced with compassion. And that doesn't mean just following a single leader. That means working together as a group and working together as colleagues and working together as friends to achieve the same goals that we're all after. There are four elements to compassion. One is commitment. Be committed not only to your team, but be committed to be compassionate towards your colleagues and towards your, uh, your friends and so you're all working towards to the same goal. The second uh, element of compassion is Willingness to be a leader. Sometimes you have to step back. But if you, if you look at parenting, it doesn't mean that you have to be a horrible leader all the time. It means that when your child is in danger, you stand up and you stop that child straight away. But it doesn't mean that you stand over people and be dictatorship. Teamwork. Because large ambitious goals do require teamwork. We all need to work together. You've got to be committed to teamwork when it comes to compassion. Again, in parenthood, you need to work as a pair you don't work on your own and, and start arguing amongst each other. <laughs> My favorite slide, individuality. 
is not particularly a good thing in these. A whole 20 individuals do not work in a team. Uh, you need to cooperate with each other when it comes to compassion. I want to leave you on the one last thought that every sin was also a result of a collaboration. <laughs> so compassion and collaboration do work together. Collaboration on its own doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the right choice. Thank you. Have a good evening.